A warm welcome to this episode of today's parent. I'm your host, Christine Casina. In today's topic, we are going to talk about fistula. Now, fistula is a condition that happens due to prolonged labor, which results in an injury, a hole between the birth canal and the bladder of the woman. To make us understand more, we are joined by Dr. Angela Anzese, who's going to share insights with us about fistula and what we can do. Dr. Welcome to today's parent. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very hopeful that my definition was proper. It was. It was? Yes. Very You're good, good at it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so fistula is a hole that happens. It's an, you know, I was really trying to understand how that would happen first of all. Okay. So by definition, a fistula is a communication between two surfaces. Right. So it could be a communication between two organs or... A communication between an organ and the external surface of your skin. Okay. So since we're talking about obstetric fistulas, I'll define it more in that particular area. So you could have a communication between the bladder and the vagina, those are two organs, or the what we have connecting the bladder to the kidney is a ureter, it's a tube that goes up. Mm -hmm. So you could have a communication between the ureter and the vagina or the urethra. The urethra is where the urine passes out right the whole okay and you know what makes me what makes me think about fistula the first time i wanted to find out more about it is the damage that it causes mm -hmm. the fact that when you have fistula that then as a woman you end up leaking urine and feces mm. that must be very uncomfortable it's very uncomfortable because it's involuntary leakage it's not in your control so you could be seated like this and you're leaking and someone next to you is obviously getting uncomfortable. You know, so. and you are smartly dressed. <laughs> exactly. Can you imagine? It's, it's a sad situation. It yeah. is. Mm. So how about we talk about the causes, Dr. What causes fistula? Okay, so since we're talking about obstetric fistulas, mm -hmm. so obstetric fistulas are basically fistulas that happen as a result of childbirth. So the most common cause of uh, these fistulas is prolonged or obstructed labor. Right. So you could be having obstructed labor and maybe you don't seek care or maybe you're doing it from home. So you stay in labor for so long. And uh, the baby's head is pressing on the mother's uh, tissues. Right. So during that pressing, it keeps pressing and pressing during that con those contractions. So it obstructs the blood supply. Hmm. And when it obstructs the blood supply, it leads to now the formation of a fistula. Which is a hole. Which is a hole. So which it forms like a communication. Ah. Mm. You know, you've mentioned, you, the, the more I say fistula, the more you say obstetric fistula. So yes. that means there are different types, right? Exactly. What are the different types? So the different types are not in my area of speciality. Right. But uh, you can have fistulas in your intestines, fistulas in your chest. Really? Yeah. There are very many types. But the most common one we know of, of course, is the obstetric, obstetric. one. Yes. Okay. So what puts a woman at risk of getting fistula? So obstructed labor is one of the major causes. And uh, how you could get obstructed labor is, for example, if you have a big baby hmm. and uh, maybe your passage as a mother is not enough for the baby to pass through. Okay. So that disproportion may lead to obstructed labor or which may be prolonged. And if it's not picked on time, if you don't intervene by intervention, we mean emergency CS. If you don't intervene at that time, uh, all that obstruction and the uh, blockage of the blood supply to the tissues leads to that fistula formation. Okay. Mm. What is considered? What is considered a big baby? So more than four, point, more than four kgs is a more big than, baby. Oh my gosh, yes. anything above four? Yes. That's a big baby. Okay. So that's why antenatal, antenatal care is, mm -hmm. um, is encouraged uh, so that throughout the visits we can see, monitor the progress of your pregnancy. And the and size the, of the baby. Exactly. And the and size the, of the baby. Any risks that we could uh, have during delivery that we need to take care of. Okay. I'm just thinking, for women in the machinani who possibly don't have access to, you, you know, your fancy scans mm -hmm. and things like that, mm -hmm. how then can you tell that you have a big baby because sometimes you have a mother who's very big mm -hmm. or a woman who's very big when they're pregnant then they mm -hmm. give birth to a two point something baby mm -hmm. how can you tell how can you tell 
Well, in uh, such in Mashinani, it's a bit difficult because first accessing healthcare is a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, accessing these facilities and also access to universal healthcare and also funds ah. to and also f um, like ultrasound facilities. I mean, in Mashinani, it's very small. A uh, small number of hospitals that yeah. have that, so that's yeah. a bit of a problem. And funny enough, people in those regions end up being lucky. I don't know why mm. they do home <laughs> deliveries and they come to hospital and they are fine. Can you imagine? Yeah, so can you imagine? It's the irony of life. I think God just finds <laughs> a way to balance, you know, different different things. Mm. The symptoms of fistula. Mm -hmm. How can a mother tell? Or does it happen once it happens? Say, for example, during prolonged labor, during birth, then the doctor will tell mm. the lady that this is what has happened. Or when you go home, mm. is when you discover something is off. So, of course, now from if I take you back from the causes, so there will be that history of obstructed labor or just a difficult labor, right? Or maybe a big baby or an, ad an adolescent pregnancy with poor bony structure and all that. Uh, so it happens after you deliver, you go home, a few weeks later you start having a leakage of urine through your mm. vagina uh, or leakage of stool through your vagina. Okay. Mm. okay. That's the most common presentation of fistulas. Right. Mm. Doctor, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Fistula, how does it present uh, itself? Does it happen when it happens during birth? Mm -hmm. Are you able to tell, me as the mother, am I able mm. to tell right away that something is off or when I go home is then you yeah. discover something is off? When you go home, mm. that's when you discover things are not quite right. Right. But during the labor process, you won't know. Mm. And if measures are not taken immediately, then that's when now it progresses and gets worse. Okay. Mm. So how, how soon can you tell that there's a hole somewhere? Is it immediate? Is it after within, the first month? Within two weeks at least. Okay. Yeah. So within two weeks. Mm. A mother should be able to should be able to tell yes, no, something is not right. Okay. And you advise that somebody seeks immediate attention. Yes. In case of any signs like that. Yeah. Okay. What complications could happen mm -hmm. if a woman leaves fistula mm. untreated? So first, you know, there's leakage of stool into the wrong place, so the vagina. Mm. So you're not supposed to have stool in your vagina. So that leads to a lot of infections and they are sent to the, uh, inside the uterus and cause a lot of complications. I wonder what kind of infections. Are we talking about so, UTIs? Yeah, you could get UTI because the stool is also exposed to the, remember the urethra is mm. where the, the hole where the urine passes. So if it goes through there, it ascends to the bladder and causes UTI, okay. that's one. And if it's in the vagina, and also maybe she, maybe she had like tears in her vagina, the stool could get access there, then they don't heal well and get recurrent infections, and also are sent to the uterus, causing uh, what you call pelvic inflammatory disease. And all that spectrum leads to infertility because you're not... Really? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's dangerous. Yeah, it's, that's very it's dangerous. depressing because your, your sexual function is not quite restored. Yeah. And also because of that infection, those infections in the long term, it can lead to infertility. No, we wouldn't want that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the statistics. According to Dr. Google, as I was mm -hmm. telling you earlier, <laughs> and most of us, mothers and fathers, I can tell you for sure, most of us, our first doctor is Dr. Google. Mm -hmm. So my Dr. Google tells me 300,000 women per year, 300,000 are diagnosed with fistula in Kenya. That's Google. Mm -hmm. And then out of the population we are, mm. 40, 50 something million, that's 6 million women, which I found to be a bit high. Mm. That's, that's 6 million higher. women in Kenya have fistula. I don't think that's possible. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you the statistics according to the Fistula Foundation. Uh, they give it at 1% one per one of women have had fistulas. So 1% of women yes, have, have had, had fistula. fistula. Mm. And uh, four out of four percent of women mm. are at risk of having a fistula. Okay. So what puts a woman at risk? The one risk I can think of mm -hmm. is say if I was very young to give birth and possibly my bone structure is not well formed, mm -hmm. our teens maybe yeah, that's are at risk of getting fistula. Yes. Another risk is uh, having a big baby. Mm. Like you've said, our four point plus yeah, champions. Four, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and also, um, women who are not able to access 
high skilled birth attendants. Right. Mm -hmm. So the rural areas and also culture. Some women believe that they, they're, they're not into cesarean sections or mm -hmm. intervention. So they'd stay into la in labor for so long, up to three days and nothing is happening. That's a long time. Yeah, that's a long time. That's a long time. Mm. Do you ever find that as a doctor, you need sometimes, uh, sometimes to sit with your patients and counsel them that this is for the benefit of you mm. and your baby, your lives right now is what matters. It's okay for you to go through a C-section. Yes, I encourage mothers, even if you're planning to get pregnant, you start from prenatal care. Prenatal is before you get pregnant. So mm -hmm. I'll come to you and tell you, I'm planning to get pregnant, so what should I do? And then me as a doctor, I, go, I take more information from you, find out if you have any specific risk factors, yeah. any diseases, conditions that may predispose you to that. And then I tell you, look, you need to be on the lookout for this or you need to start taking certain medications. Right. And then when you get pregnant, then throughout every visit we do scans, mm. Uh, growth scans of the baby, I'll tell you, your baby is this size, if it's more than a certain, if I suspect like by the time you're going to delivery, the baby will be four kgs or more, then I'll tell you there's a risk of obstructed labor and all those complications mm. and we may need to intervene. So then that way, of course, a mother is able to be mentally prepared, yes. be able to prepare better. Mm. And counseling, counseling helps okay. during antenatal care and also come with your spouse because uh, when these things happen, when a fistula occurs, the spouse is like nowhere to be seen because of the wow. stigma and yes. the embarrassment and all that. So if you come with your spouse, we discuss these things. So even him, he knows mm -hmm. of these risks that, I mean, these issues that may occur after delivery. So you're all prepared. Yeah. Mm. So let's talk about actually the effects right about now, because you've just mentioned one of the main effects of, of fistula is then the stigma that comes along with it. Mm. What other... What are the side effects? Because I can imagine the shame for mm. the woman. What else do they have to deal with? Your fistula Depression. patients. Depression. Depression, yeah, psychosocial. You know, your people start to disown you. Wow. Yeah. So you get a lot of uh, social isolation. Mm. No one wants to be around you. Uh, divorce rates are high. Because of fistula? Mm. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, divorce rates are high. So that's why it's important to come with your spouse. So okay. that they know that psychological preparation. Mm. And, you know, maybe what people don't know, possibly it's, 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 of course, it must be possible to treat it, but people are not aware. Yeah. Then they stay with the condition for so long, yeah. feeling that shame and mm. being ostracized. Yeah, fear of uh, seeking advice, seeking medical attention because of that embarrassment, mm. but uh, you need to create more awareness, um, like this is to the Ministry of Health, like yeah. they need to create more awareness of fistulas, and actually they've been doing that, mm. there have been fistula camps in Kenyatta, um, women coming in free, for free, to be checked and treated surgically, okay. so the treatment is surgical, yeah. Okay, let's take a short break and then we continue Dr. Ari when we come back. Our conversation today is about creating awareness about fistula and we are joined by Dr. Ansese. I know you've learned something so far. Let's take a short break. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to this episode of Today's Parent where we are talking about fistula and I know in the first part you've learned the definition of it and how it happens. In this second part, you're going to understand from the good doctor what treatment options are available. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ray, we have a question from Fatma and Fatma is just wondering, mm -hmm. and I'm sure most of us are also wondering the same, is fistula a poor man's problem? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd say yes. Mm. Mm. Because if you look at the causes, the most common cause is obstructed labor and uh, not having to access high-skilled birth attendants to detect this problem on time. Mm. Yeah, so we have people delivering at home, or even in the rural areas, by the time you get to hospital, damage has been done. Wow. Yeah, so I would point it towards that. So a lot of women in the machinani are the ones who are struggling with fistula, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mainly due to the fact that you have mentioned that access to quick medical care. 
yes. is the issue. Yes. When and you're having healed. that long, prolonged labor. Mm. And for some of these women, remember, they have to travel from so far mm. to access the nearest hospital. Mm. You can imagine in, in northeastern and mm. other distant places, mm. that must be tough. Yes. That must be tough. By the time they get to hospital, the baby is probably gone. And then yeah. you have, you know, this condition that you have to live with, that must be tough. Another question for you, uh, Dr. Ari from Caro, and her question is, mm -hmm. is fistula a sign of cancer? Not necessarily, but it may coexist with cancer. Mm. Uh, cancer of the cervix, mostly, uh, because the cervix is around that particular area. It's near the bladder, it's near the rectum. So when it spreads, it forms wounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those wounds may lead to leakage of urine into the vagina or even stool in the advanced stages of cervical cancer. Okay. And also people with cancer undergo radiation. So radiation is burning cancerous cells. So in that process, you may burn normal mm -hmm. tissue and it may lead to formation of fistulas. Of cancer cells. Fistulas. Of fistulas. Mm -hmm. Wait, so that means fistula is not only one hole, it can be many, 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 yeah, it many can holes. Occur, yeah, it can occur in maybe two places at the same time. Wow. You can have a, a um, it's called a vesicovaginal fistula, whereby the bladder, the urine is leaking into the vagina. Mm -hmm. So there's a connection between the bladder and the vagina. Right. Or you could have a, a fistula from the back, so the rectum and the vagina. So stool goes into the vagina. They could coexist at the same time. That would be tough. Very tough. That would be very tough. Mm. The good thing, you've mentioned that there's, uh, treatment is possible. Yes. And you've mentioned over and over the fistula foundation, which I also found online. It mm -hmm. made me wonder, what kind of work do they do? So they organize like camps, medical camps, to create awareness, first of all, and also to enable... Uh, People who are not able to maybe afford healthcare, so yeah. it's free medical camps. And during those free medical camps, you're examined, uh, the fistula is located, okay. and uh, some are also treated at that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. How often do the camps happen? Uh, at least uh, once a year in Kenyatta. Once a year. Once a year it happens in Kenyatta. So still as a woman, if I'm <laughs> struggling with fistula, I then have to find a way to travel, say, from northeastern, to come to Kenyatta? Well, the most, okay, mostly they happen in Kenyatta, but there are other regions that they go to. Okay. Mm. So it's possible for the treatment to be done, say, in a mobile camp? Yes. In a, in a mobile uh, with a clinic? Theater, though. With though. Wow, so we need a <laughs> mobile clinic as well. Yes. Do we have those in this country? Um, well, there was a project about that, mm. with the Beyond Zero, but I don't know where it got to. <laughs> that is homework for us. We need to find out. Because I remember yeah. I ran very hard the other weekend in that particular race. So mm. that would be a good thing to know where that money is going. I would want it to go to, you know, women struggling with fistula as well. That yeah. would be a good thing. Mm. Another question I have for you. When we talk about the treatment options, you've mentioned, actually you've mentioned the only treatment mm. is through surgery. Mm. Well, in some cases, if it's mild, maybe your, let's say when you cough, the urine comes out, that's a mild one. You can give medication mm. and also do what you call Kegel's exercises yes. to strengthen the, the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor, exactly. Uh, but in severe cases, if you're just seated like this and it's involuntarily coming, mm. then there's no... Uh, option for medical treatment there, then surgical treatment would be... The only option, yes. or the so best the, option. Yeah, the best option. You've mentioned something very, very important, because somebody could be watching, and maybe they, as we age, our pelvic floors become weaker, and mm. we know we need to be exercising them, but uh, until we are told we need to, most of us don't. How do you tell when you have a weak pelvic floor and when you have fistula? Well... Okay, a weak pelvic floor is you, you're able to control your urine passage to some extent. Mm. Yeah, so maybe when you're laughing, that's when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> or that sneeze. <laughs> yeah, or that sneeze, or coughing, or maybe when you stand up. Really? That's when, yeah. But a fistula is now complete, complete. Beyond, beyond your beyond. control. It's called incontinence, complete incontinence. Yeah. Okay. So the only option for treatment is surgery. Yes. Okay. So in the meantime, 
when you're not able to access surgery, say mm -hmm. my woman or my mother in Northeastern or in, other, in another region, mm -hmm. what do you do in the meantime? So first you give them antibiotics because they tend to get recurrent infections and also encourage them to hydrate a lot, okay. drink a lot of water because the urine also there is predisposes to infections, a lot of UTI and uh, there's what you call a catheter. So let's say someone has delivered and she had like obstructed labor and yeah. you suspect she could have a fistula. You put a catheter, which is a tube that goes into the urethra where the urine passes out. And they have that tube for, like you can give it for 14 weeks or a certain period of time. Okay. Minimum is 14 weeks. Okay. Then they come back to you, you check like that. Hmm. Mm. I only want to drink more water because... <laughs> They are even advised to drink up to even five liters. That's a lot of leaking yeah. that will happen, don't you think? <laughs> but that's usually after surgical treatment okay. to okay. enable healing. And, okay. yeah. Part of management you did mention is counseling the couple. Does this happen through the Fistula Foundation or you? As In fact, we were joking with mm -hmm. my colleague earlier on that you gynecologists need to do counseling courses as well because <laughs> you end up doing so much counseling when you are seeing your patients. For a couple like that, where can they get help? So antenatal clinics, antenatal. that's where it starts. Yeah. So it even starts even before you get pregnant. So prenatal care. Mm -hmm. So after prenatal care, you get pregnant. Then during the antenatal care, you come with your spouse. And every time you talk about all those risks, apart from fistula, what, what else may happen at delivery? and also the chances of you having a cesarean section and why. Are couples open to have that discussion? Because you know when you're expecting a baby, it's, it's a jolly time and you just want to be surrounded by good vibe. Nobody wants to think about the risks. So you actually have these conversations yeah, with your patients. To. Yes, it's very important. Yeah, so that you at delivery, at least you're psychologically prepared. Because labor is a difficult process mm. and you need to have all these things in mind. It's only fair for me to give you all that information okay. as my patient. Okay. Mm. It then makes me wonder, what can we tell the men who are watching and possibly <laughs> their wives are going through this phase? Mm. What can you tell them? It's a, it's a thing that happens during delivery. So don't stigmatize anyone. Don't, it's a, we're all human. Mm. It can happen to anyone, yes. And it's treatable. So during that time, take care of your wife, you know, uh, be there for her because it's psychologically also uh, Tough on dreaming. her. Yes. It is tough on her. Mm. I just wonder then, as we're winding up, is there any way to prevent fistula? So uh, it starts from before you get pregnant. Mm -hmm. All that prenatal care antenatal care and also at delivery. It's a whole process. So at delivery, you need to access high-skilled birth attendants. Go to a good facility where you can monitor labor yeah. closely. And uh, once you suspect that there could be signs of obstructed labor, you take action. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's where it starts. Right. Um, support groups. I wonder, I wonder if mm. the Fistula Foundation has support groups, by the way. I'm um, not sure about that, mm. but that would be a good starting point. That would be good mm. to have. Mm. I, it also makes me wonder, in the referral hospitals, because I know when you go to referral hospitals, you have a place where you have people who have broken bones mm. and broken limbs. Mm. Do we have units for fistula? Yes. I, th uh, I think somebody, somebody did mention we have one at Kenyatta. Well, there's a special uh, surgical unit for that. At Kenyatta? Yes, at Kenyatta. Right. Uh, they usually go to Clinic 66. That's where they're admitted. Oh, it's called Clinic 66? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where they're admitted and uh, information taken from them and surgical preparation. And the same theater is there. Okay. Mm. Okay. What is the recovery period like? Does it take a month? Does it take two weeks? Uh, it can take even up to six months. After surgery, yes. That's quite a long yeah, time. Yeah, that's quite a long time. So you need to, after surgical operation, they need to, still need to come back to you, uh, ask because there's still a chance of recurrence. Mm -hmm. So you need to ask them if they're still leaking and, yeah. Okay. If there's any infection, you treat, yeah. 
I'm just wondering as well the cost implication of having fistula because then I can imagine for the six months plus or the immediately you realize you have the condition, you must have, I'm sure you have to go, you have to spend a lot on adults, adult diapers and stuff like that. Mm. Must be expensive. Well, yeah. It's a challenge. And nobody's mm. donating. You can't, I wish you could get them for free, don't you think? But it's not a possibility. <laughs> Well, those are issues that need to be addressed by the Ministry of Health. Yeah. Mm. But I'm then just wondering something that maybe you can address and you mm. can have the conversation with people in your, in your circles because mm -hmm. I'm thinking of you. You are the gynecologist. Mm -hmm. I have just given birth. Two weeks later, I've been told I have fistula. I have a newborn. Mm. I need to raise. And other children may be within, that, within my family. Mm. That must be tough. Maybe you need to partner with counsellors as well. Yes, that would be a good, uh, a good um, place to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to create more awareness, uh, especially, and have uh, more spouse involvement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be a good Because that's thing. where the complications start. <laughs> yeah. And on that note of spouse involvement, just your final word of encouragement to a couple who could be watching. It's treatable. Yeah. It That's is treatable. All. Yes. <laughs> and on that positive note, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate your knowledge and making the time to come here today. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. Ari. And on that note, we come to the end of today's episode of Today's Parent, where we hosted Dr. Anzese, and she mentioned that fistula is treatable. If you have somebody who's going through it and you need us to connect them to Dr. Anzese or the Fistula Foundation, just send us an SMS on 22999 and we'll be happy to do that. I come to the end of today's episode. I thank you so much for your time. If you're looking for parenting resources, always go to www.supermamas.co.ke. Don't walk the parenting journey alone. And I want to take this opportunity to thank our host, Little Cribs. Whenever you're looking for kids' furniture, make sure you come over to look at this fun, exciting, durable, and affordable kids' furniture, I know you will find something that you love. This is a beautiful day. And as I always say, make it, make it intentional to have a good day. Life is what you make it. Have a good day. See you next time.